Let's take a look at rational inequalities on HP Prime Calculator. So rational inequalities. Step one is get everything on the left side, zero side, zero on the right side. Step two, get a single fraction. Step three, factor the top, factor the bottom, numerator or denominator. Set each factor equal to zero. <coughs> Excuse me. And solve. These are our critical values. Now step four, using the x-axis, the critical values, and the graph, then determine the answer. If you have a less than or less than or equal to, then your answer is below the x-axis. If you have a greater than or greater than or equal to, then your answer is above the x-axis. If you have a less than or greater than, you're going to use parentheses. If you have a less than or less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, you'll use brackets. There we go. So let's take a look at some problems dealing with this. Let's take a look at our first one here. Now I give you all the steps, but that doesn't mean you're necessarily going to use them. Um, I just like to give steps to work 100% of the time, or as close as I can get. x plus 3 over x minus 1 is greater than 0. Okay, rational. Rational means single fraction. Specifically, we have x's in it. So that's why this is a rational inequality. Step one, get everything on the left side, zero on the right side. Well, that's done. Step two, get a single fraction. That's done. Step three, factor the top, factor the bottom, set each factor equal to zero and solve. Well, there's nothing to factor, so I'll go directly to setting each one of them equal to zero. So I'll set x plus three equals zero, and x minus one equal to zero. And that gives us negative three and positive one. And what step was that? That was step three. Okay, step four. Using the x-axis, here's the x-axis. Uh, critical values, well, we came up with negative three, so I'm going to go ahead and put negative three here. We came up with a positive one, so put positive one there. Um, and then these split them up in intervals. Clear over here is negative infinity. Clear over here is positive infinity. This in first interval is negative infinity to negative 3. The second interval is negative 3 to, neg or negative three to positive 1. And this last interval is 1 to positive infinity. And it also says the graph. Then determine the answer. So using the x-axis, critical values, and the graph, find out what your answer is. The trick on most calculators to plugging in a uh, rational into your calculator is anytime you have more than a single number or a single variable on the top or bottom of your fraction, you have to put parentheses around that part. So I'll put parentheses around the x plus 3, parentheses around the x minus 1. If we just had a single x up on top, we wouldn't need parentheses around it. Wouldn't hurt. And sometimes, depending upon where you are on your calculator, you don't even need to put parentheses, which I'll talk about more when plugging this in. Now, I should be in your apps menu. If you're not, press your apps. Then you want to left or over to function. And press enter on it. Now press backspace. Now I'm going to choose my parentheses button. Now put in x plus 3. So x plus 3. Right arrow over to get out of the parentheses and then divide by. And notice I'm already in the denominator. So I don't think you need the parentheses around the bottom part. But just as good practice, I'm always going to put it. So I'll put my parentheses and then the x minus 1. 
and then I'll press enter. You notice it gets rid of the parentheses anyway. Okay, now I'm going to press plot. Now our critical values is where something potentially happens. So this interval over here, we're looking from negative infinity to negative 3, so less than negative 3. Well, negative 3 is right here somewhere. To the left of it, I see it's above the x-axis. So we're just going to put a little dash here to indicate above. That's all we care about, is above and below. From negative 3 to 1. Well, here's negative 3, and 1's about right here, and I see it's below. If it's below and part of the interval, then it's below and all of it. If it's above and part of it, it's above and all of it. And then from 1 on, well, here's x equals 1's right here, and on to the right, it's uh, definitely above. So this would be above. Okay, this problem is a greater than. Greater than says our answer is above the x-axis. So I'm going to look where my graph is above the x-axis. Well, here it's above. And over here it's above. So this interval is from negative infinity to negative 3. And this interval is from 1 to positive infinity. Infinities always have parentheses on them. This problem specifically has a greater than. Greater than says we use parentheses. So I'll put parentheses around these two, and then you put the union symbol in between them. And that's our answer. Okay, let's look at this problem. We've got x over x minus 3 is greater than or equal the two. Step one. Get everything on the left side, zero on the right side. Well, I'm going to take the two over, and I'll get everything on the left side. When I take it over, it becomes, we've got x over x minus three, minus two is greater than or equal to zero. Remember uh, three and a half, that mixed number? Well, that's shorthand notation for like 3 plus 1 half. And to merge this into a single fraction, what we do is we take what's to the side, the 3, multiply it times our denominator. So 3 times 2, and then you add your numerator, number up on top. And your denominator stayed as is. So again, I took the number out in front, multiplied it times the denominator, added the top part. Well, this is no different. This is a mixed number form. We're going to take the uh, negative 2 that's to the side, multiply it times our denominator. So negative 2 times x minus 3, and then we're going to add our numerator, what's on top, which is an x. And then our denominator stays as is. Let me explain that one more time. Take the number to the side, multiply it times your denominator, and add the top part. Well, that, um, I should be marking down what steps are, I guess. Step 1 was get the, everything on the left side. Step 2 is get a single fraction which is what we're doing now. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 3 is a positive 6 plus x over x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. Negative 2x plus x gives us negative x plus 6 over x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. Now my steps say to um, Factor the top, factor the bottom. I could factor a negative 1 out of the top, but probably wouldn't benefit me a whole lot. It then says set each factor equal to 0 and solve them. These are our critical values. So we're going to set the negative x plus 6 equal to 0. And we'll set the x minus 3 equal to 0. On this one, take negative x to the right side, and we get x is equal to 6. This one, take negative 3 over, and we get x is equal to positive 3. Step four, wrong color. Let's try again. Ah. There we go. Step four, using the x-axis critical values and graph and determine the answer. Well, here's our x-axis. Our critical values, the smallest one's three, so I want to put it on the left side, and then four or six is our large one, so I'll put it over there. It splits it in the intervals, remember. Clear over here is negative infinity. Clear over here is positive infinity. So this uh, first interval is negative infinity to 3. 
This one is 3 to 6, and this one is 6 to positive infinity. Well, now we want to graph it. And you want to graph some version where you have 0 by itself on the right side. Doesn't matter which step. This one I think is probably the easiest. I remember I'll put parentheses around the top, parentheses around the bottom when I'm plugging it in. Okay, so I'm going to press my uh, symbol button and press my backspace. Choose my parentheses. I want negative x plus 6. I do my negative x plus 6. Right arrow to get out of the parentheses. Then divide by. And I'll put a set of parentheses and x minus 3. And then press enter. Now if I do my plot to get my graph. Again, we could care less what the graph looks like. We're trying to identify a button below. Our first critical value is 3. 3 is somewhere right here. And I can see the left of it is definitely below the x-axis. So that's going to be below. Now between 3 and 6. Well, here's 3 and 6 is here. I can see it's above in part of it. So it's above in all of it. Now 6 and beyond. Well, I can see over here it's below the x-axis. So that would be below. Okay. We got a greater than or equal to. Greater than or equal to says your answer is above the x-axis. Well, I can see my graph is above the x-axis right here. So my answer is going to be 3 to 6. And greater than or equal to. Greater than or equal to says we use brackets. So I'm going to have a bracket on the 6. And I'll have a parentheses on the 3. Why did I switch patterns? I just said brackets. It's, the logic would dictate both of them should have brackets. Think where the 3 came from. The 3 came from our denominator. Any critical value, critical number that comes from your denominator always has a parentheses on it. So that's why we came up with the answer we did. Now, sometimes there's easier ways to do these on a um, uh, graphing calculator, especially the CAS, um, where that's computer algebra system. But um, I try to uh, show the techniques that would benefit you in college algebra. Uh, a lot of instructors wouldn't give you any points if you just write down your answer. You know, they have to show steps. This uh, provides an aid. It uh, gets rid of the um, uh, old tedious part of these problems and leaves the more exciting part if you're in the math. Anyway, that's solving uh, rational inequalities on an HP prime graphing calculator.